morning. I'm reading the prayer of adoration. God ever creating, ever loving, ever leading, you are stillness when we are frantic. You are truth when we are perplexed. You give us freedom when fear takes hold. You send light when we have lost our way. You are love when we feel lonely and empty. You give us energy when we are ready to reach out. We praise you, Creator, Christ Spirit, for all that you are, all that you have been, and all that you will be for us. In our worship, we offer you our love and loyalty, here and now, now and always. And let us all join in in the prayer of um, confession. God of mercy and patience, you call us to follow you and offer us purpose and new possibilities. Yet we confess we often hesitate. We are not sure what we have to offer you. We prefer that someone else take the lead, and maybe we will follow them. Forgive us when we hesitate. Help us trust in you and what you know we have to offer in Jesus' name. As we come before God in prayer and confession, we hear these words of assurance of God's pardon and grace. Believe the good news. In Christ, God has offered us forgiveness for all our sins and shortcomings. Trust that this forgiveness is for you, and know that God's steadfast love and grace endures forever. Again, we um, recognize that we have an offering to bring, an offering of our time, our talents, our abilities, our insights, and our resources. And so as you have laid your offerings at the door this day, uh, we give thanks for the gift that we have been blessed with, so that we might be a blessing to the world around us. If you have not laid your offering in the plate at the door, on your way out, perhaps you could do that at that time. We're going to sing hymn number 367, Come Down, O Love Divine.
scripture reading this morning is from John 1, 43 to 51. Jesus calls Philip and Nathaniel. The next day, Jesus decided to leave for Galilee. Finding Philip, he said to him, follow me. Philip, like Andrew and Peter, was from the town of Bethsaida. Philip found Nathaniel and told them, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophets also wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? Come and see, said Philip. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he said of him, Here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, I saw you while you were still under the fig tree before Philip called you. Then Nathanael declared, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus said, You believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree. You will see greater things than that. He then added, Very true, I tell you. You see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the witness of God's people. Thanks be to God. They set out.
will reflect today on a, a statement, a question in the passage that was read for us out of John chapter 1. The question, how do you know me? Have you ever asked that question of somebody that comes up to you and maybe it's been a while since uh, you've seen them and you don't recognize them anymore and they, they say, hello, how are you? Isn't that great to see you again? And you stand there wondering, how do you know me? It's a common thing, isn't it? Well, maybe not common every day, but something we can understand. Well, Nathaniel asked that question of Jesus. How do you know me? And as I've been thinking about that over the past week and reading and putting thoughts together, I had two pieces of story to tell you. Over Christmas, I've been emphasizing the idea of the story. And the story is what we really take part in just by telling our story, the experience of our lives, the ways that God works and moves in us. Nothing huge and spectacular necessarily, just who we are. And that God actually knows us. So I wanted to just read those the two brief stories, one that you've heard me before, but I'm just going to touch on it a little bit. And the other one that is very similar to it, which is why I wanted to use this, uh, is, I'll, I'll get to that afterwards. <laughs> the first story is my story. And it's about the carvings that I do. How many have ever heard about me carving? Yeah, probably most. I wrote a little brief outline. It's called The Visual Learning Model for the Creation of an Ornament or a Community. How's that for a long, simple title? The creative process allows us to create beautiful things out of the gifts and the abilities that we have been given and what we nurture. Carving is such an ability and a process that I love to do. The small wooden ornament used as a Christmas tree decoration or simply a window hanging has taught me some lessons that I seek to apply both to the creating of community and to the work of God in my life. Both things being beautiful things. First of all, we start with raw material. For carving, it's a block of wood. And for commu creating community, it's the people willing to be formed in community. We must use certain tools appropriate to the task, such as a sharp knife for carving. It has to be sharp. It can't be dull. Because if we have a dull knife, and it slips, we will injure ourselves. It's less likely to slip if it's really sharp and does what we want it to do. We must always hone our skills to use the tools efficiently and effectively. And that comes over time. The vision of the end result, or some approximation of it, is in the eye of the artisan and the beholders, those that see it. It is likely to change as the, form of the formation process goes ahead. It can get a little messy, carving all over the, the chips, all over the ground around you, and if you happen to be like me and every once in a while carve in the living room, and Sandra says, <laughs> clean it up, and I do. But it's whittled away, uh, whittled away, uh, whittled